what's up there yourself first. Today I'm going to show you how you can add refrigerant to your car's AC system. Alright, now there's a couple of ways you can add refrigerant to the system. The correct way would be to use one of these AC manifold gate sets. But uh, I won't use this and I would use, I'm going to use the can and show you how you can use that. Uh, just because I'm going to assume most people don't have one of these. But I'll uh, touch upon how you, the process of uh, using this to add refrigerant to the system at the end of this video though. And if you do decide to use one of these cans, then I suggest you uh, buy one that comes with this gauge. And you want a gauge because uh, this gauge will basically tell you whether you have enough refrigerant in the system or not. Now, it's not going to be super accurate, but it will give you a pretty good ballpark estimate. And that's important because, uh, you know, obviously, just because you're not getting cold air coming out of your air vents, that doesn't necessarily mean you're low on refrigerant. You could have enough refrigerant, but have some other electrical or mechanical problem with your AC system. And if you don't have this gauge and put too much refrigerant in the system, then it could potentially cause further damage to components of your AC system. Now as far as how much refrigerant you put in the system, well that depends on uh, whether you're just low on refrigerant and you're just trying to top it off so you get cold air coming out of your air vents. Or if you are uh, trying to refill an empty system like we have here due to replacing your air compressor. So if you're low on refrigerant and trying to add refrigerant to the system, you just go with this gauge. On the other hand, if you're trying to refill an empty system, then you should go by weight. So you want to look for a sticker that we got here or look into your manual to try to find out how much uh, refrigerant you need to put in the system. And as you can see on this sticker, we need to put about 655 to 705 grams of R134A refrigerant. And since every ounce equals 28 grams, that would come out to about 23 to 25 ounces. And now as you can see, uh, the refrigerant in this can has a net weight of 22 ounces, which means we would need to use up the entire content of this can plus another two ounces to get about 24, which is in the middle of that uh, you know, refrigerant uh, capacity specification. And for the remaining two ounces, I'm just going to use this uh, smaller can, which also has a UV dye in it, which is useful for finding AC leaks. And I'm just going to weigh it first, then I'll uh, start adding it. As you can see, it weighs about nine and three quarters right now. And then uh, after I add a little, I weigh it, and when it gets to seven and three quarters, then I would know that I've added two ounces and I have a total of 24 ounces of refrigerant in the system. So what I recommend you do next is to wrap these threads on this side where your regulator is going to screw onto with some Teflon tape. Because a lot of times uh, you don't get a good enough seal here and then you start leaking your refrigerant out. There we go. Next you want to remove this cap. Next you want to find your low side AC port. And the high side and low side uh, ports on your AC system will have, uh, usually have a cap on them, marking them. Here's our cap for the high side, as you can see we got an H on this. And further down here, close to the firewall, we can see the port on our low side, which is covered by a plastic cap with an L on it. But if the ports on your car's AC system don't come with these little caps marking them, don't worry. The lower pressure side port is smaller than the high pressure side. And furthermore, the quick connect coupler that comes with your refrigerant can can only fit on the lower side anyway. Alright, so next we get our quick connect coupler and we're going to attach it to our uh, low pressure side fitting. And we do that by putting this over the fitting, pulling on this, pressing it down all the way, then releasing this and making sure that it has locked into place. It's going to be hard to show you guys exactly what I'm doing, but you just want to press it down, make sure it's, and then pull on it, make sure it's locked in place. All right, so from here on out, we will need to turn on the car, but uh, I'll explain to you the next couple of steps with the engine off so you can actually hear what I'm saying. And then after I explain it to you, we'll uh, turn on the car and then go through the steps again. All right, so the next step would be to get in your car, turn on your engine, and then uh, turn your AC to the maximum cool position, and also your blower fan to the maximum as well. Next, you want to go over to your AC compressor and make sure your AC compressor clutch is engaging. And to clarify for people that don't know, this thing right here, this is your AC compressor clutch, this is your AC compressor pulley. When your uh, clutch is not engaged, or in other words, when the AC is off, but the engine is running, the pulley is turning only. And this front piece is standing uh, still. But when you turn on your AC and your AC compressor clutch is engaged, both this piece right here and this pulley are turning together. Right, it's important for your AC compressor clutch to engage because uh, otherwise the numbers uh, you see on your gauge don't mean anything, they're not going to be accurate. So if you check your AC compressor and you see that the clutch is engaged, then you can just go on to the next step. Now if you check your AC compressor and see that the clutch is not engaged and only the pulley is spinning, well in, in those instances I usually uh, just start adding a little bit of refrigerant. Maybe I'll add uh, about a third of the can and then uh, wait five minutes, see if the compressor clutch engages. Because, uh, you know, honestly, a lot of times when the AC compressor clutch is not engaging, it's just due to a leak. When you have a leak on the system and you leak refrigerant and the refrigerant goes below a certain threshold, your AC pressure uh, switch, which in our case is this switch right here, 
disables our AC compressor so that our uh, compressor shaft doesn't just uh, freewheel with no refrigerant system and uh, potentially damage itself. Now if you're low on refrigerant, it's basically due to a leak. Now if you're interested in knowing how you can find your uh, leak and also uh, do some AC repairs yourself, uh, I suggest you watch uh, some uh, videos. I'll put them up on the screen as video links uh, at the end of this video so you can click on them. Also put some links in the description box for you as well. All right, now on this car, the AC compressor clutch is not gonna engage, but uh, that's because it's a completely empty system. But on your car, let's say the AC compressor clutch does engage. So what you would want to do next is just take a look at your pressure gauge, and if it's in the, you know, if it's in the low level, then you want to add refrigerant. If it's in the fill level, and you're still not getting cool air, then you can go ahead and add a little bit of refrigerant. Uh, again, this uh, pressure gauge is not super accurate; it might be, you know, just a little bit off. But if it's above the fill level and you're still not getting uh, cool air coming out of your air vents, then your problem may not be due to refrigerant or low refrigerant in your system and you need to look elsewhere. All right, a couple pointers. When you're adding refrigerant to the system, you want to start adding with the can and that's uh, close to its normal upright position as possible. You don't want to turn it on its head and add refrigerant because when you turn it on its head, you're adding the refrigerant that's in a liquid state. And your low pressure line, the refrigerant that normally passes from your low pressure side, it goes straight to your compressor in a gas state. And if you put a lot of uh, liquid refrigerant in that pressure line to your, gas, to your air compressor, then you could potentially damage your air compressor. Now I personally have turned the can on its head and added refrigerant, especially when it gets low. And uh, you know, I've never had a problem with my AC compressor breaking down, but it's just something you want to keep in mind. All right, enough talking, let's get to it. And here's a look at our compressor clutch, and as I expected, it's not engaged. All right, so next we're just going to start adding refrigerant. You can also shake this can around, and that will help the refrigerant pass through it. There we go. There's our compressor clutch now is engaged. That will also help suck in more refrigerant and make it a lot easier. Now. If you were just topping off, this is where you want to keep, keep an eye on your uh, pressure gauge and not overflow. But since I know this system is completely empty and I need to put the entire contents of this can plus some of the other can, I'm just going to keep going. And by the way, here's a visual of the AC compressor clutch engaged. Alright, so I just got done putting the pretty much the entire contents of this can into our AC system and uh, I do confess uh, I didn't turn it on its head but I did turn it to its side, uh, kind of like we have here. And as I shook it to get the last bits of the refrigerant that was in the can in the system. And here's a look at our gauge and as you can see we are in the filled area but we're still in the, a little bit on the low side. And again that's because we'll still have to put another two ounces of refrigerant in the system. Alright, looks like mission accomplished. We got pretty cold air coming out of these air vents now. All right, now as promised, let's quickly talk about how you can uh, use an AC manifold gauge set to add refrigerant to your AC system as well. All right, so the first thing you want to do is to make sure both these valves are in the closed position. Uh, you want to make sure, again, this one is closed and stays closed. We're not going to use the high pressure side for adding refrigerant to the system. We're only going to use the low pressure side. Also, you want to make sure these valves on your quick connect couplers are turned counterclockwise and they're out all the way. And then what you want to do is to unscrew this uh, center hose. Next you want to get a can of refrigerant. Now I know this is not a uh, refrigerant but it's a stop leak and a detector. But the important part is that this, uh, the top of these cans is going to be like this. Where the other end of this hose is going to screw onto. And then you want to go ahead and screw it in. Alright, next you want to take the quick crank coupler for your low pressure side and put it on the low pressure port on your AC system. And then after you install it on the port, you want to run down this valve all the way. Next you want to come back up here and open up this blue valve which is for your low pressure side and when you do that refrigerant is going to travel from the can through this uh, yellow hose down in this blue hose and into your AC system. And that's how you add refrigerant to your AC system. So if you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. You may also want to consider checking out some of my other videos. I'll put them up on the screen as video links so you can just click on it. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.